internal recruiters working with external recruiters. Can it be done? How? Let's definitely all work together. Check out this video right now to see how I do it. Hey, welcome to The Millionaire Recruiter. I'm Brandon Rooney, your Millionaire Recruiter. And if you haven't seen this channel before, it's definitely about making you the next Millionaire Recruiter and being amazing at your job. So let's get to it. I was inspired today because I did a very cool podcast, which I'll be sharing shortly, um, soon as it's out. But uh, it was an amazing person I was talking to who just got I don't know, all my engines going. <laughs> He's been in the industry also a really long time. He's been through the ropes. We talked about contingency and like all this stuff. Anyways, what brought um, me to this video is collaborating with internal and external recruiters. Um, I think it's very interesting how we've gotten so far in this industry. So regardless if you're internal, external, we definitely have to work together and we definitely have a lot of the same strengths, but if we don't work together, then we are both going to fail. So how can we collaborate? How can we use strengths of both? Really well, actually. So. I have been an external recruiter uh, for 14 years now. So I've had techies, my own firm, for 12. And I have recently started something new, which is an RPO model, which is basically I am taking recruiters and putting them internal. So now I have seen complete internal ropes. I've definitely seen it throughout the years, but having a different lens on things is super interesting and really eye-opening um, to see how some companies just nail it as far as collaboration goes and how some are still falling short. Uh, and I was really shocked to see. So externals, you know, as we know, you've got the hard knocks of contingency life, the highs, the lows, the ever so exciting, uh, high money, high fast moving. You're working with all these different clients, working with all these different candidates, trying to place someone somewhere. In the meantime, you're trying to be that next millionaire recruiter and you're having a great candidate experience. You're tracking really nicely. You're sending out the right amount of in mails in order to get to your results, which the result is getting your candidate that offer that then accepts. That's the grand scheme of things, right? Well, what we do now is we're not really working so much with the lead decision makers. And when I say that, I mean the actual, like the CTOs, CEOs, director of engineering, VPs of engineering. We might get to um, talk to them and collaborate a little bit and have you know meetings, right? To make sure that we're on the right hunt. But what we're really doing is working a lot with internal recruiters. And internal recruiters is very similar, but in each different company, it can be very different because internally you could have, you know, just the sourcers, literally just the people that are finding um, or just sending messages out to get them. Then some companies pass it off to another recruiter who then handles the candidate experience. And that's kind of known as the back end, which is kind of confusing, but you are going to have a point of contact if you're working with external and internal. And the way to really boost that relationship is very candid. Everything needs to be very transparent. I think that in the recruiting world in general, you have to have that. Uh, communication is key and it's definitely key when it comes to working together, uh, working with two recruiters. Uh, no egos. If you have an ego, like it's not going to work. It's literally the worst. So definitely making sure that the client has the culture value as all they care about is the right person for the job. Um, the ads, the culture ads, um, the engineering ads, like there's a couple different components that go to it and they just want that right fit that is going to drive their mission forward and whatever work that they're doing, they're doing it as, on, with their values. So that's really important. If you have a client like that, then the recruiter will also act like that and they will just want to make sure that whether it's their candidate, a candidate that was applied or a candidate that came from an agency, it doesn't matter. Everyone gets that same candidate experience and is treated fairly equally and given that same right to get that job. That's how it goes, which means internally and externally, you guys talk to each other a lot. You have each other's back. Uh, we make mistakes all the time, right? We're human. So uh, if one slips and the other one kind of picks up, um, and again, that's a very transparent communication, that's important. Um, another thing that's crucial with blending these two is that you guys are not working on the same positions. So there's so many openings with a lot of companies right now, and to have internal resources working on the same thing as external resources, it just 
does not make sense. I don't get it. Um, if you're a client or an internal, you're gonna be like, oh my God, wait, why am I working on the same roles? Uh, it, again, um, there's not enough time in the day. There's tons of competition, so there should be no overlap unless there happens to be roles where they have multiple, multiple, multiple openings. But then in that case, you, you do tell that to the contingency firm um, because again, transparency is very important. Once a contingency firm figures out that maybe their work isn't valued as much as internal work, they might not want to work together. And I don't think any company right now can turn off any faucet. I think that's super important. So we need to get used to each other. Um, and again, we're here to do the same thing. We're here to get the right person for the job for the client in order for the client to drive their company forward, right? So please work together. Please be transparent. Hop on the phone. I would do weekly check-ins. Um, sometimes it gets too much, but it can be honestly just 15 minutes on like, hey, this is what's going on. Um, internal needs to then say, oh, by the way, we have someone um, maybe internally as a referral that came in for the role that the contingency recruiter was filling. I mean, the contingency recruiter can't be upset about that, right? That's an internal referral. So they can say, hey, just as a heads up, we have an offer out, you might wanna stop that building that pipeline, um, or hey, you know, um, this role over here doesn't have as big of a pipeline as this other role that you've been really nailing, can you please switch? You know, I think that that communication is so valuable because the contingency recruiter, the external recruiter will not be frustrated, the internal recruiter will not be frustrated, it's be so harmonious. Um, and then also on the external side, give internal some slack because sometimes they don't have clear transparency with their own company. So lots of times hiring managers are overworked, tons of interviews, they lose track of things. Remember, that's not their job. Recruiters understand how to shuffle all of those things, right? Because that's their job. So what happens sometimes is hiring managers don't keep the recruiting team in the loop, therefore has a recruiting team, internal recruiting team, supposed to keep the external recruiting team in the loop. So again, make sure you're communicating that and don't give them a hard time if it's, you know, sometimes it's just not up to them, right? So definitely use each other. What I would even go as far as, because I think that I will, as you hopefully know, and you've watched the videos, I like to pay it forward and I definitely believe in karma and in that higher universe. And so I would even share like, hey, I'm just letting you know, like let's say there's like this major layoff and you're, you know, you guys are trying to fill it too, but maybe you know that they're filling other machine learning roles, for example. Like maybe you'd have the back end roles, they're doing machine learning and be like, hey, heads up, this amazing company that I know you love people from just had layoffs, you might wanna hit up their machine learning team. If an external did that to an internal recruiter, we would totally fix this problem we're like we're bashing um, again i don't think it happens a lot but since i did see it the other week i was really concerned and it made me just think that i don't think clients always use um, external resources as well as they should and what they're absolutely capable of uh, i think what's really interesting about external resources is they see a whole other market lots of times when you're internal you're kind of sipping that kool-aid and you only see so clearly or maybe you only see your competitors in this particular division whereas external has reach all over the place um, because there's, there's more of more, more bodies, you know, in general, it does not like the small team. Um, and again, they're able to see um, just the market for what it is, not what, you know, in their organization is. So uh, definitely work together, share resources. I would love actually, as I think about it, for you all to put below, like, what's been an amazing internal external relationship um what firms are awesome i don't mind talking about that like i love that stuff i think we should definitely um pay it forward here and plug your own firm if you think your firm's awesome and then network um i kind of have in the back of my mind that i i want to build out like the ultimate agency <laughs> where it's like all these different agencies just come together and just like conquer this whole thing because there's so much money to be made in the recruiting industry and like i'm so niche like i'm tech and by the way as i talked in this podcast today you need to be niche i talk about that in tons of my videos you have to find your niche and stay in it and own it, own that lane. It's okay to go out of your niche, um, but make sure you've, you've nailed that. Or maybe you just don't like your niche altogether and you go find another one, but 
tons of recruiting stuff to do. Um, definitely gonna touch on some more videos with the internal, external, um, as far as what jobs you can do. I think I've covered that a bit, but it's ever changing and ever growing and um, definitely keep fighting to get in this industry. I've had a lot of really cool people reach out recently that have said, hey, I'm a recruiting coordinator. Uh, I haven't been able to sh get the opportunity to source. Like, how can I do that? Like, how, how does my resume look? I love that stuff because I hate when companies clip wings and I believe in ever learning. So definitely reach out. Uh, if I can get to it, I'll get to it. But uh, don't be offended if it takes me a little bit. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you are also collaborating and not only uh, with in internal versus external recruiters um, or just talent acquisition team in general, but also with your clients and with your candidates, your candidates' friends, your candidates' brothers, sisters, whatever, um, you want to keep that open communication and collaboration going. And if you're just using it every day with everyone, then I think you're really going to poof, bust out and see tons of success. So have fun with it. Keep open minds, right? I will see you every Thursday at noon. Hope you enjoyed this one. Like, subscribe, and keep paying it forward. And don't forget that money is just the vessel that gets you to do all the amazing things you want to go do in life. So build that career and go get it. See you next week.